Hello and welcome back to ADHD Support Talk Radio. My name is Tara McGillicuddy and I am an adult ADHD support coach and I'm also the founder and director of ADDclasses.com. And at ADDclasses.com we provide virtual support and education to people affected by ADD and ADHD. We offer free teleseminars. We have an extensive ADD audio library with more than 150 courses, and we also offer more in-depth support programs. And you can learn more about ADDclasses.com by going to the website, www.addclasses.com. And with that, I would like to welcome back Lynn Idris to ADHD Support Talk Radio. In just a moment, we're going to be talking about procrastination in adult ADD and adult ADHD. So welcome back, Lynn. Thank you, Tara. Thanks for having me. Now, before we get started talking about procrastination, which I'm sure a lot of our listeners can relate to, can you let the listeners know a bit about yourself and how they can get in contact with you after today's show? Sure. Um, I'm an ADD coach myself. Um, I work with professionals who are struggling to reach their potential due to challenges with things like disorganization, time management, weak follow-through, and procrastination, as we're going to talk about today. I'm also a woman with ADD myself and um, mom to a college-age student with ADHD, too. And I've gone from living in a state of chaos and overwhelm, like most of the listeners can relate to, to living a life of, you know, more calm and, and more success. And I help my clients start firing on all cylinders in all their areas of life so that they can have more time and more energy for what they love. So if you'd like to learn more about me, you know, you're welcome to visit my website. It's www.coachingaddvantages.com. And, you know, schedule a complimentary phone consultation if you'd like, you know, to learn more about what I do and, and how I can help you, too. Yeah, and you also have great resources and products on your site, too, in addition to offering coaching services. I know you have some, I don't know if they're CDs, but you have some products that really help people with different areas of ADHD, too. So I definitely recommend checking out Lynn's site. Thank you. Yeah, I do. I have some I have some e-products, you know, audio downloads, um, PDFs, different kinds of you know, sort of self-help help sort of information products on there, too. So thank you, yeah. Okay. So procrastination, you and I, you know, like, what should we talk about? And you said procrastination. And I'm like, I know we've talked about it before, but it's, or I've talked about it before on the show, but it's such a common challenge for those of us with ADHD. So I thought it made sense to talk about it again because I know a lot of our listeners, m- myself included, can really relate to procrastination. So I guess one of the first things to talk about is, you know, what is procrastination? I know we throw that word around all the time, but I don't know if some of us even really <laughs> know the definition of it. That's a really good point, Tara, and you're, you know, you're spot on. I think procrastination is right up there, you know, probably tied for the number one complaint of of people who come to me for help besides unmet potential. And a lot of that unmet potential stuff, I think, kind of goes back to procrastination and the struggle we have with following through and, you know, doing what we intend to do. Several years ago, um, many years ago, I was getting ready to do a a teleseminar on procrastination. And I thought, well, you know, let, let me just Google here and see what, you know, Google says about the definition of procrastination. And I was kind of surprised, and it it kind of led me to a whole different way of looking at procrastination and and a a way that I coach my clients around procrastination a little bit differently. So what I found was that Merriam-Webster defines procrastination as to put off intentionally doing something that should be done. So Hmm. the true definition of the word procrastination includes intention, and intention implies willfulness and choice. And there are really strong negative connotations and really strong undertones of, you know, moral judgment and, you know, negative self-talk when we're using the word procrastination to describe what we're doing or what we're not doing. Yeah. And as coaches, you know, we know that the undertones of the words we use to describe ourselves and the way we think about ourselves and our behaviors are really important. And that can make a really big difference in our ability to, to look at our, our challenges ob- objectively and find solutions. So when we think about someone who procrastinates, we think of words like lazy, you know, and lazy means, of course, defined as um, not inclined to work. We think of someone who is weak, 
maybe a little bit, you know, willfully disobedient, stubborn, defiant, somebody who's uncooperative, all of those kinds of things. But most of the time, those of us with ADHD are not really intending to procrastinate. We have the best of intentions. And then we feel very badly about ourselves and, you know, really beat ourselves up for being weak and lazy and all of those other horrible things we say and we think about ourselves. And, you know, most of the time our intentions are not to be lazy or weak or idle. And I think that's a really important distinction. Yeah, so it sounds like a lot of us with ADHD aren't really actually procrastinating. I mean, I know myself and the thousands of people, you know, I've come in contact with over the years the majority of them, this, it isn't intentional. They want to get through things. They want to do them. So it sounds like it may not actually be procrastination, you know, in the standard definition of it. And I think that's a really important distinction. You know, when we have every intention to follow through on what we've committed to, you know, whether that commitment was to ourselves or to someone else, and we feel so horribly about ourselves when we don't take action. You know, we're mm-hmm. we're embarrassed or even humiliated, and we become sort of mired in blame and shame and really, really stuck in all that negative, you know, feeling and thought about ourselves. And what's worse, you know, after years and years of struggling to do what we intend to do, you know, our self-image becomes sort of tainted, sort of skewed, sort of, you know, kind of, um, off balance with, with who we want to be and who we really, really are deep down. Our self-esteem takes a beating. But most importantly, I think we stop trusting ourselves and we stop believing in ourselves and our abilities. And that's what really takes a hard toll mm, on our ability yeah. to reach our potential and build upon our natural strengths and our natural talents. I mean, it's it's when we are calling ourselves procrastinators and, you know, so many of us really kind of take that word on take that characteristic on as a personality trait, like it's who I mm-hmm. am, yes. that can be really harmful in the long run. I think, And I think that's really important to, you know, to pay attention to. Yeah, I mean, we, we end up believing those negative things about ourselves if we say them about ourselves, if other people say them. So, yeah, you get, you get stuck in that mindset, and it can almost seem impossible to get out of it. And, and then when you learn, wait a minute, I'm not actually procrastinating. I'm not actually a procrastinator. I mean, I think that could be life-changing, just changing that label in itself, which is, you know, looking at it differently. Yeah, I think so, I think so too. And, of course, you know, sometimes we do procrastinate on purpose. Yeah. Sometimes we do procrastinate intentionally. Um, and, you know, but I ask my clients to, to distinguish and identify when they're not doing what they intend to do, you know, are you really procrastinating intentionally or are you stuck? Are you mm-hmm. overwhelmed? And if you are procrastinating intentionally, you know, why? You and I were joking around, you know, before the call about what I call productive avoidance or productive mm-hmm. procrastination. And I think a lot of us with ADD can realize this, can 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 relate to this. Um, and I, I, what I call productive procrastination is when, there's something that we're really overwhelmed by or really stuck by, something we're really having a hard time doing, you know, usually due to our ADD challenges. So we find something else to do that is productive or feels productive but really isn't the thing we intend to do in the moment. And mm-hmm. the I was telling you, like, the joke in my house is that if you catch me with a feather duster or a Swiffer duster or something, you know, send me back to my office. There are certain kind of go-to things that I do that are sort of out of character. I'm not um, uh-huh. particularly domesticated. I don't love to clean. I don't love, you know, that sort of thing. So if my family sees me with a magic eraser or a, you know, a Swiffer duster or something like that going to town, you know, I've told them to, to ask me what I'm not doing. What are you not hmm. doing that you're supposed yeah. to be doing? You know, if you pay attention and you know what your kind of productive avoidant behaviors are, it can really give you a good, you know, a good indicator that it's time to stop and and think and look at what it is that you're supposed to be doing and really take a look at why it's, you know, why you're avoiding it, why it's overwhelming, Mm -hmm. why you're stuck. And that's, you know, that's really important. If we're stuck in that blame and that shame and that negative, you know, self-talk, we're absolutely 180 degrees from where we need to be to find solutions to our problems. It's you literally can't be, you know, a creative problem solver and beating yourself up at the same time. And I so I think, mm-hmm. you know, these are important things to think about. Definitely. So you talked about avoidance. What else is it 
that those of us with ADHD who may not actually be procrastinating, what are we doing? We're stuck. We're yeah. stuck or we're overwhelmed. You know, when we're overwhelmed, and it's, you know, ADD has its own kind of special kind of overwhelm, that ADD overwhelm is it's a really – it's a really difficult kind of inertia or, or stuckness to break. It's, sometimes it feels like you're absolutely immobilized, like I don't know why, but I just can't do that thing. So um, we do other things or we find other distractions. Sometimes it feels more like, to me anyway, like I'm, I'm sort of trudging through quicksand, so everything's harder and heavier when that thing is you know, kind of looming over me, that thing that I'm, I'm, I'm avoiding or I'm stuck or I'm overwhelmed by. And it's, mm-hmm. you know, we get overwhelmed by, you know, things that don't seem like they should be overwhelming. For us, we tend to struggle with, you know, most of us tend to struggle with more main, mundane things, things that other people make look easy. So for a lot of us, you know, paperwork, filing, um, chores, other kinds of administrative tasks, even returning phone calls and things like that. And it can be a little different for each of us, of course, because, you know, your ADHD is, I always say, is as unique as your thumbprint. But when, you know, those sort of mundane things are the things that we're stuck on, it really isn't logical because, you know, for the most part, we know how to do them. We know how other people do them. Other people make them look so easy. And intellectually, you know, you know how to make a phone call. You pick up the phone and you dial the number, but it can be overwhelming. It can be you know, something that really stops you in your track tracks and, you know, keeps you from moving forward. Often it's the it's the more difficult, more challenging tasks that are easier for us. Things that are harder mm-hmm. for other people sometimes are easier for us. You know, we always say if it were rocket science, it wouldn't be so hard. But the yeah. easier, simpler things that other people make look like they're easy and simple aren't easy and simple for us. That's a great explanation. That makes sense. So, you know, when you're overwhelmed and stuck, that that's not intentional. That's because we're being bombarded with stuff and our brain's almost like shutting down or getting stuck. So I think just knowing that can change things. Like just it's not intentional. You're not a bad person because you're brain because you get overwhelmed and stuck. So I think that's really important. I'm so glad you brought that up, Lynn. It really is important and it really is you know, looking at your challenges objectively is how you find solutions. And, you know, most of us are very creative. We're great problem solvers. We're, you know, kind of -of out-of-the-box thinkers. And we can come up with some really, you know, innovative, creative, and even maybe crazy ways to overcome our challenges if we can stop beating ourselves up and and look at them a little bit more objectively, A a little bit more nicely, a little bit more kind. Yeah, it's so important to be kind to ourselves because... It, we're, we're for a lot of us with ADHD just are not kind to ourselves, and we can be our own worst enemies. So that's definitely makes sense. Yeah, now, true. is there anything else related to procrastination, overwhelm, avoidance that you haven't discussed today that would be important, Lynn? There's a lot. I mean, I could okay. I could talk about it. <laughs> for, I could talk okay. about it for hours because it is such a big it is such a big problem. You know, follow through. Um, procrastination, if you want to call it that, overwhelm, all of that, you know, is kind of, it's kind of the rub of, of ADD. Mm-hmm. It's, 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 you know, where our challenge is kind of in a nutshell, you know, but most of it is related to our executive function challenges. Most of it is related to our brain wiring. It is related to how we're looking at it too. So, you know, I think if, of everything else, you know, if if I would want the listeners to walk away with, it's, you know, pay attention to how you're thinking about yourself when you find yourself stuck, when you find yourself overwhelmed, when you find yourself not moving forward on something that you really intended to move mm-hmm. forward on, you know, pay attention to how you are thinking about yourself and how you're paying attention to your own, you know, inability to follow through. And, you know, often that opens up the possibilities for us. Yeah, and you and I were talking about what a huge issue this is for people. So we actually decided to have you come back to addclasses.com on Wednesday, May 13th, and do a free teleseminar about strategies to 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 deal with and get through procrastination. So yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, yeah I am too. I, and you said to me, have you done one for procrastination? And, you know, I've had ADD classes up and running for over a decade. So I'm like, yeah, of course we've done one for procrastination. But 
it's such a huge challenge, such a common issue for people with ADHD that I think it's in people can use can hear the strategies again, and we always have new people that hear us on the radio show that sign up for the teleseminars haven't been before. So I, I think it's I know it's going to be a great teleseminar. So you can sign up for free at addclasses.com, and that will be on. Wednesday, May 13th at 9 p.m. And um, I, I know my um, ADD market, so um, those of you who can't make it live, if you sign up before the teleseminar, you will be, before the live teleseminar, you will be able to listen to it free for one week on the website. But you do have to sign up before the 13th. Um, so I'm excited about that because we can all, you know, and I'm someone, you and I are both educated on ADHD and procrastination and overwhelm and everything, but I know every, anytime I hear somebody new speak I or I a new pre, hear a new presentation, I, I learn something new or it reminds me of something I heard before and may have, you know, forgot about or put the back of my mind. So I'm excited for this teleseminar. Me too. It, and and I, I'm with you. I listen to what a lot of other experts do and what a lot of other coaches do, and sometimes it'll spark something that I've, you know, completely forgotten about, something that I know worked in the past that I've, for yep. some reason, you know, inexplicably we drop things from time to time even yeah. when they're working. And sometimes people just frame things differently that really, you yeah. know, give you a different perspective. So I don't, I don't think you can ever really learn enough because you're really learning about yourself. I mean, learning about yourself, yeah. learning about the people that you love and, you know, there's no such thing as too much self-knowledge. No, there isn't, and so I definitely recommend. Okay, now we're getting towards the end of the show. Is there anything else you'd like to leave people with today or share that you haven't today, Lynn? Um, I think, the, you know, the big thing is, is, you know, as we say in ADD coaching, pay attention to what you're paying attention to. Pay attention to how you're thinking about yourself and how you really are framing you know, your behavior and yourself kind of from a character perspective when you're not following through on what you intend to do. I think that, you know, that's so important. And, you know, I hope that you will join us for the ADD Classes um, teleseminar um, in May, and I, I think it's going to be terrific, and I'll, I'll cover a lot more about solutions and, and tools and, and approaches so that you have a pocket full of things that you can call on when you do find yourself stuck or overwhelmed or even, mm -hmm. you know, productively procrastinating intentionally. Yes. Okay, and what is your website um, and contact information once again, Lynn? Okay, again, you know, my name's Lynn Idris. Um, my website is www.coachingaddvantages.com. So it's coaching advantages with with two Ds, so it's a little play on words there. And from there, you can um, you can contact me directly via email. I'm pretty sure my phone number's on there as well somewhere. Um, and, you know, schedule a complimentary coaching consultation if that's, you know, something you'd like to learn more about. Well, thank you so much, and thank you, everyone, for listening. And if you are listening to us on iTunes or Stitcher, be sure to stop by our website at ADHDsupporttalk.com. So thanks again, everyone. Have a great day. And now, insurance-minded speeches from GEICO. Hardship. My grandmother would go through it every month to pay her insurance bill. First, she would handwrite a paper check, in cursive. Then, using her own tongue, she would wet a stamp for an envelope. Today, however, we need not weary our hands and tongues. Today, we can pay our GEICO bill with the GEICO app. Away with hardship, in with bill pay on the GEICO app. Thank you.